Today I'm going to be looking at some of my older miniatures and I'm going to share with you guys what I've learned over the past few years as a full-time commission painter. Then the entirety of the cosmos is accessible to each and every individual mind connected to the great mind, the great spirit. Welcome back to the channel collectors. So in this video, I'll be looking at some of my older miniatures which I've painted and the objective is so that you guys can learn along with me and see what I have improved on for the past 3 years so that you don't need to take 3 years to improve. So if you're ready, let us begin. So the older miniatures and the current miniatures are from the Zombicide Green Hot game. They are painted in approximately the same amount of time so I would say that the quality should be the same but that's why I think today we can see how my understanding of painting has influenced the changes and these are some of the changes which I want to talk about. So first and foremost I would like to bring to your attention would be the point of focus. So before you paint a miniature you got to think about where you want the viewer's attention to be focused upon. Looking at the op necromancer logically the focus of the op necromancer would be on his chest and in the center mass of this miniature. So here are some strategies which you can employ to bring the focus to the middle of the miniature. So for me, I chose to make the contrast on the chest area of this miniature a little bit more pronounced as compared to the arms and the hands. So for this miniature, what I've employed would be to make the center mass slightly brighter than the rest of the miniature and also to increase the contrast on the chest area. So because it's brighter, it gives me a bigger dynamic range of values to play with and in comparison to the hands where the highlights are not as strong, this gives a lot more attention to the chest and it makes the miniature focus right in the middle. So the next point which I feel that many miniature painters can learn from would be value control. So value control means that you will limit your the use of the brighter colors to only logical areas rather than highlighting the entire miniature. For the latest Op Necromancer miniature I painted, I only sparingly use the high values in the chest areas and in the shoulders, not in the arms. However, in the older miniature, as you guys can see right here, the older one has highlights in all components and just doesn't look as realistic as the current one, which I prefer a little bit more. If you would like to understand more about values, you can check out our tutorial right here. So the next point I'd like to bring up to all you painters out there would be color composition. So when you're painting miniatures and if you have all the colors in the world, would you use all the colors and stretch it all? If it's for me, I wouldn't because I feel that if you limit your color palette, you make the miniature look just a little bit better. So as you guys can see in the Orc Necromancer, there's only one super saturated color which is the violet. The other colors are all grayer versions of that so that it doesn't take away the focus from the middle portion of the Orc Necromancer miniature. However, right here, if you look at the older Ock Necromancer picture, as you guys can see, there is more than one overly saturated color. The red oxide, the emerald colors on the belt, it makes for a very confusing composition and the viewer can be easily confused of where he should be looking at. So the next point which I would like to share with you guys would be adding additional details. So because we are painting miniatures, we want to make sure that the miniatures actually look larger than they actually are. And one strategy to do this is to add additional details, which sometimes can be quite fine and finicky. However, in my opinion, it makes the miniature don't appear as the scale that they are meant to be. So in the newer version of the Hawk Necromancer, which I painted, I added some tattoos and face paint, which is according to the artwork given by the game. However, in the older version of the Orc Necromancer, I didn't include these tattoos and as you guys can see, the effects are really obvious. So if you look at the older Orc Necromancer side by side with the current Necromancer, it really looks like the Orc Necromancer, which I painted 3 years ago, was at a miniature scale. However, if you add these little details, the one which I painted recently looked a lot bigger in the pictures. So the next point I'd like to share with you guys would be color temperature. So when I began my miniature painting journey, I always thought that color temperature was some aristocratic art shit that people just wanted to act fancy about. 
but never was I more wrong. So colour composition can be used to create contrast between warm and cold. Looking at the odd abomination which I painted recently, I used a really warm base coat and eventually moved on to a cool highlight which really made the cool highlight look so much more cool. However, if you look at the older version of the Orc Abomination which I painted, as you guys can see, the cool colours were highlighted in cool colours. The warm colours such as the leather were highlighted in warm colours and it doesn't give that dynamic range and that contrast which many of us are trying to achieve. So, the last point which I want to share with you guys would be understanding volumes. So as miniature painters, you guys should just take some time to understand anatomy and understand the volumes in which the muscles are sculpted. Because once you understand the volumes, you can start painting the miniature according to the volumes rather than what is sculpted. So the new Orb Abomination was painted with my knowledge on the human anatomy and how it influenced the light. However, in the older Orb Abomination, it was painted with uh, my knowledge of how light hits individual shapes. So as you can see in the older version, I highlighted every single small detail which I could spot from the miniature and it kind of looks a little bit strange. So I would recommend all you guys to take some time to go learn about some anatomy and understand the volumes so that you can become a better miniature painter. So there we have it, I've shortened your process and you don't need to take 3 years to get to where I am right now. You can do it much quicker by watching this video. If you found this video useful and you think of a friend that wants to improve miniature painting, do share it with them because I hope that everyone gets to become better and don't need to take 3 years of full time painting to get to where I am right now. Alright, so you guys know the drill, like, subscribe, all that stuff because we post videos every day. I don't want you to miss out on any videos that we post and I hope that you get to become a better miniature painter. And if you can afford it, please head on to our Patreon and become a Patreon today. I'd like to thank my Patrons for allowing me to do this and I hope to see you guys in the next video. See you!